this morning at breakfast, uh, Norm asked if I would address you. He said uh, specifically five minutes. And uh, one minute introduction, one minute conclusion, and uh, three minutes with content. Well, I have a prayer. Lord God, your steadfast love never ceases and your mercy never comes to an end. With your joy and peace in our hearts and by your grace, may we serve you in truth and fidelity and serve our neighbour with justice, compassion and generosity, living our lives each day in the fullness of your mercy and love, which is new every morning, through Jesus Christ, our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Amen. Been much mention of dancing. And I want to share with you the dance of my tribe when the gospel arrived in Aotearoa, New Zealand, Christmas Day, 1814. These are the exact words, and I'll give an explanation. Kanuku nuku kaneke neke. Kanuku nuku kaneke neke. Titi ro ki ngā wā e hōra nei mehe pipi wharauro wā ki tū wā takoto te pai. Takoto te pai. Fiti, fiti, tata, tata. Fiti, fiti, tata, tata. He rā tau wā ki tū wā takoto te pai. It's a, a dance of joy. You saw me up here trying to do a haka last night, some of you. Um, I tell you, if my mother saw that video, please don't record it. She'll, she'll give me a whip. What do you think you were doing? You're not even the man to do that. But, but I was forced up here by those others from Polynesia. Uh, a haka is a dance of challenge. But the words I've uttered to you this morning is a dance of joy. It's called a hari, a hari. Hari is to be joyful. And it's about creating space. Kanuku nuku, I move left. Kanuku neke, I move right. I move left, I move right. And it's about, I believe, although I, don't, I think some of my ancestors weren't, weren't clear on, on, on what they were doing, we're dancing the dance of joy to welcome the gospel into their world, to welcome the gospel into their community, into their life, and to welcome the gospel into their hearts, creating space. And the last word is about establishing peace. It's a command. Because I have made space in my world, in my community, in my heart, good Peace is established as a result. The gospel arrived in Aotearoa, New Zealand on Christmas Day, 1814, whereby my ancestors were those first who, who were to receive the missionaries, Church Missionary Society. And with that, brought about a transformation when you make space in your world, in your community, in your life. And so therefore, I am a descendant, my father's 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 father, my great-great-grandfather, who became a Christian after the signing of the Treaty of Waitangi 1840. And from there on, we became Christian, in fact, Anglican. And I'm Anglican right to the core of my being. My father would have no other way. In fact, in my tribe, we are the most loyal tribe to the Anglican Church. 99% of our tribe are Anglican. And that's by virtue of the fact is that the Roman Catholics came on the west coast, I'm on the east coast. And our ancestors said, we don't want the Romans to come here. We'll keep them on that side. And they stayed on that side. Because when we create space in our world, in our community, in our lives for the gospel, that transforms us. And, and I am, I am the, the descendant, the heir to that legacy that has been left. And so... I often utter the, 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 the dance of joy when I preach to congregations in my area. And I watch some of them dancing. They're out of rhythm. They're out of tune. And you're never going to get a Māori to dance to the same tune of them all the time anyway. Someone's doing this action, that action. It doesn't really matter. 
because what, what, what is happening is that the gospel is taking root in that person's life and that person is expressing it how they know best. Can I say something to you? I've only got two minutes left. Uh, about, Thank you, <laughs> I should have said this at the beginning, I bring the greeting of our Primate and Archbishop, Archbishop Brown, today. And uh, to Archbishop David, um, whom, whom we met uh, at Lambeth in 2008, uh, in the Diocese of Guildford. You might remember, we were hosted by the Bishop of Guildford, and I said to him that the Earl of Onslow, who lives in Guildford, bought from my ancestor, a meeting house in 1887. He was then the Governor General of New Zealand. He said, oh, I'd like to have that Māori house, I'll take it back to England. So it's in Surrey, in Guildford. I said to the uh, Bishop of Guildford, I'm going to go there, put up my flag and say this belongs to me. <laughs> and he said, uh, the Earl of Onslow is my good friend, I'll ask him. But no, he'll definitely say no. So, because then I, have, I feel that I also belong here as well. But uh, Archbishop David, it's good to see you. I don't know if Archbishop Fred is here. I should have greeted him uh, formally. Bishop Mark, thank you again for the invitation. The bishops that are here, whom I've met, clergy and laity. It's a great privilege, extreme privilege, for me to be with you at the Sacred Circle. <coughs> Wherever Māori gather together, the Māori Church, we're dancing all the time, singing all the time. By the time we do our business, the conference has ended. <laughs> it's all over. It's all over Spanish. I've been a bishop only for 10 years, relatively short time. Archbishop David, if you're going to consecrate a bishop in this week, I'll stay. So every week you say you consecrate bishops? Well, I'll stay. <coughs> but do you know what that has done? Five bishops, Māori bishops in the Anglican Church out there in New Zealand, changed the face of the church. Overnight. We revised our constitution in 1992, which immediately empowered the Māori Church, became equal partners. And that's how we, if I take the theme for today, the question is, what makes an effective church is an effective gospel in the life of that church. So in, in Aotearoa, New Zealand, we, we felt that the way to empower Māori is to give real power. And real power is, if you like, it's constitutional as well as gospel. So we have a phrase, we are gospel-based and we are treaty-based. A treaty that we signed between Māori and the representatives of Queen Victoria. That gives us our rights, our entitlements. We are joined together by baptism. And that gives our entitlements in terms of our faith. And so we have combined the two together. So overnight, 1992, five Māori bishops appeared <laughs> all in one week. <laughs> in fact, they consecrated one, one day, the next one the following week. So in four weeks, consecrated four new bishops. The fifth bishop was the Bishop of Aotearoa. It changed the face. So when you can imagine the House of Bishops meeting all together. There's five Māori sitting there. They say, what are they thinking? And what are they thinking? Let's dance. Let's have a dance. But the dance is our dance. You have to, I'm not going to dance your dance anymore. I've danced that long enough. You're going to dance our dance. So that's what happened. And do you know, um, a number of the Pākehā bishops could dance. They were fluent Māori speakers. They had already transformed their lives because they had worked with Māori. And so it wasn't, it, it wasn't difficult at all. So now, 20 years on, the Anglican Church in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and Polynesia is very different from what it was before 1992. And what I see among you today, we're on the same journey. You, we are our brothers and sisters in Christ, and you, you are what consider our elder cousins. In Māori we say tuakana. So that um, a tuakana is a brother of a, of a male or a sister of a female, but an elder, senior. And so I am the tainer, I am the junior. So the responsibility of the junior to the, to the senior is to do all that person's bidding. So when my senior says, you go there, then I'm here. So I've come to Canada. The, uh, the Vicar General, Bishop John Gray, Bishop Mark, he says, you go there. And you know, the, the junior doesn't say why. I'm gone. That's all. 
So, so, but you are like the tuakana to me. You are like the senior to me because your history is a long history. But we are joined together because of our story. It's been a story of struggle as well, but it's also a story of hope. So when our, my ancestors uh, became Christian, they could see that they were building for them a community of hope. Theologically, that's about salvation. Though they wouldn't have been able to articulate that. So that it was about hope. And hope is what has been given to us, what we are heirs to. My, my five minutes is long over now. But can I just finish on, on this point? The... Anglican Church in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and Polynesia has one constitution and it has its canons. The Māori Church has no canons. Can you believe that? Yeah. And do you know why? <laughs> when we have canons, we get ourselves in trouble. <laughs> we operate on principles. Yeah. And the principles are our own traditional values and principles. So when we gather, we operate on principles. And the principles essentially are... And there's a list of them, but I'll give you the, 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 the main ones. The first one is rangatira tanga, chieftainship. Now, you, you might say, why is that a principle of virtue or value? It is because, for, for, for myself, to be a chief, I have to behave like a chief. I have to relate to you. And, and the, the chief's role, comes with, with that role comes duties and obligations. And once a person fails to behave like a, like a chief, they, they will say to you, you are not a chief. You do not behave like a chief. You must have integrity. You must have respect. Authority, but the authority that is God-given. And also it comes down your, your, your genealogical line. You are a chief. And so a chief must, must be able to express to others. And the word we have for chief is ranga tira. Ranga is to weave. Tira is the group that is travelling. So the chief's role is to weave together a group of individuals, of communities who are traveling together, like the church. Ecclesia is all about belonging. Yes. And so the chief's role is to weave. So the chief can never be a person that can be anything but that, to weave together peoples, individuals. And that, and that I would suggest to you, is the model which the Maori church itself has established itself. So when we get to, 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 to situations where we say, what do the canons say? You know what we say here? Close that book. Close it. We use our own minds, prayer. We seek God's will. We discern God's purpose for our lives as a church. And finally, I'm long gone past five minutes. Finally, though, could I just say this, is that I also believe the danger for the Māori church in, New, in Aotearoa, New Zealand, is that we are becoming tribal. Now, we, we are very staunch uh, in ourselves. So, I'm from the north. Unfortunately, the northern tribes were the conquering tribes. So, everywhere where I go around New Zealand, oh, you people came down and you, yeah, yeah I know that, I know that. That's 200 years ago. Get over it, move on. <laughs> And they say, and they, and they say to me, um, no, 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 no. We don't forget. Okay. Do you know what forgiveness is? I come now to ask for your forgiveness for the work of my ancestors. But we have to do that all the time. And that's that's. I mean, that's essentially what it means to be a Christian, to ask God's forgiveness from God and of each other. And so, so for me, that the danger is that I, I think for 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 Maori anyway, is that. The struggle for self-determination and all of that is necessary. It's necessary for us to become the ahika. The ahika is a metaphor for a person who belongs. Ahi, ahi is a fire. Ka is the light. So we say to our own people, take your rightful place. You are the ahika. Your role here is to nurture the faith in your community. So the vision for... The Piyupatanga to become an effective church is for every marae, every Māori community to have one priest, two deacons and three lay readers. That's been the vision for 30 years. On every marae, every community for the church to be effective. We are a long way off there. We are a long way off. But that essentially is what, we, what is the minimum that we, we seek 
for all Māori communities, one priest, two deacons, three lay readers. Now, some of these Māori have ten priests. <laughs> hey, you're going past, you're going way past. But that's all good because God calls each one. God calls each one to ministry. And so we see there, there are strong communities. But there are also communities that are weak. We are facing all kinds of difficulties uh, uh, within our communities. But essentially, for the gospel <clears throat> to continue within in the lives of individuals, communities, is for the church to be the ahika, the church to take its rightful place. And that's what I believe is the duty that we have to our people. Can I sing a song finally? Yes. <coughs> uh, the song is in English, if you don't mind. <laughs> I've got to get the right key. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will sing this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Can I acknowledge um, Sir from the Bible Society? I listened with great interest to you last night. And uh, my friend Jim, Bishop Jim, he said, was it you who asked me about, do we have a Māori Bible? Right. Yes, and, and of course, our scriptures were translated 1827. Our first full Bible in Māori is 1887. And so um, we are going through now a stage in revision, revising the Māori Bible into contemporary Māori language. It's very difficult. Because I have to say to our people, some of them are speaking a whole new language, but the challenge of the church is to present the scriptures in the language of the people today. Yes. And uh, even though Maori language uh, purists would say to me, get down from that stage, don't say, say that, the purest Maori. But in fact, uh, for me, I, I see there what's required for the young, particularly the next 30 years, could be a... Not a new language, but a whole new way of expression. And so I want to thank you because you inspired me. And uh, when I saw the people from Arctic with your Bible, you inspired me even more. Uh, and so uh, thank you very much. Okay. I've got, I've got one more minute just to finish. Sorry. Sorry, sorry Lord. Sorry, Sydney. I, I'm thoroughly enjoying myself here. I am. I'm thoroughly enjoying myself. Um, I'm learning a lot from you. I see the strength of the gospel in your lives. You, when I look at you, I see my own people. Uh, there's, there's few elders here that look like my elders. And I took photos. Do you know why I take photographs? I go back and I say, there you are. That's you there. No, that's not me. <laughs> say, yes. Because uh, Maori, Maori society, the elders are those that possess and hold the knowledge. Elders are those who transfer the knowledge. And for the church, I can see that I knew it's very, very enriching. I'm going to go back and as a bishop because I have a council of elders, um, but there are only 24. I think I need to make it bigger, make a few more, I think, uh, because uh, it's your wisdom, it's your experience that enriches the church. Yes. Also, can I say to the young, the young lady who spoke here yesterday, um, are you in here? Alicia. 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 Um, I have to say, if we had youth like you back in Aotearoa, New Zealand, um, you spoke with confidence, eloquence, and um, um, quite a, 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 a sense of uh, good theology. So you also, I'd like to bring perhaps, I should have brought a youth person with me, Bishop Mark. But uh, um, if that was so, one of the problems is uh, with our youth, I take them to international conferences, in the Pacific only, and uh, I took one young lady to a conference in Fiji. Um, and she was uh, 18 at the time. Her father was, uh, grandfather was, the, was one of the, 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 the uh, most important chiefs in, in New Zealand. She didn't come back with me. Uh, she met a young man there. <laughs> and um, I went home and her grandfather says, where's my granddaughter? I'm sorry to say that she's still there. And he said, uh, I hold you accountable. Go back and get her. <laughs> well, the, the result of that is she ended up marrying the young boy that went to the Anglican one as well. 
and they have three children, and they live there in Fiji. So I stopped taking youth with me everywhere. <laughs> hey, you, uh, but but do you know? Do you know? I think it was it was it was a union that was um, uh, a forged in heaven because uh, that's part of it. So uh, I think that if I was to bring youth here, they would learn so much from you of your respect, of your humility, and of your faith, because. Um, you are so diverse. You are so diverse, but you have a, a unity here which uh, uh, encourages me. So, I mean, if it's anything worth anything to you, um, uh, thank you for, for, for allowing me to be part of your sacred circle. And uh, I look forward to the rest of the week. Uh, also say that Canada is a fine place. It's almost like New Zealand in many ways. We're part of the Commonwealth. And your son is very kind to you, the son. The Ra, the Ra, the sun, is very kind to you. In New Zealand, the sun will burn you in 10 minutes. Here, I, I can sit out in the sun for a good length of time and feel the warmth of the sun. You know, that's a good sign for Māori. That, that, that means you've got things going right here for you. I've spoken too long. This, my five minutes is just, just going now. Finally, uh, we, we, farewell, we farewell each other. Uh, with these few words. Enga mana, enga reo, enga hapu, enga hawifa. To the integrity, to the honour of this gathering, to the four winds, I greet you all. Te nā koutou, te nā koutou, te nā koutou katoa.